Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name's Gordon James. Uh, so I think over the last few presentations, the size of the company has got gradually smaller. That changes now. Uh, I work for Unilever. I suspect if I'd given this presentation about 10 years ago, most people maybe wouldn't have heard of. But we do double brand a lot now. We are a brand-led company, a bit like you heard earlier in, in respect of uh, RB. But we do do an awful lot of double branding now, so you do see that this, this Unilever U on a lot of our products. But we are, we are not an SME. We are a very, very big company. We're not really a biotechnology, well, we're not a biotechnology company, but that, that doesn't mean that biotechnology isn't relevant to many of our brands, many of our business lines, and a lot of the research they do. So, for example, the reason I'm here is because I'm a member of the, the CBM net, the Crossing Biological Membranes, network covered an, an ongoing collaboration with Gavin Thomas under the auspices of that, that agreement, partly under the auspices of that, of that, that uh, organization for the last few years, uh, and latterly also with the Simon Eustace team at the, the University of um, Oxford. And between us, what I've done is they've elucidated the uh, microbial biochemistry and the structural biology of a transport protein, a bacterial transport protein, that's involved in malodor production in the underarm. So it's the, it's the transport protein that takes up the precursor, a substrate that the bacteria then convert to malodor. And you can see straight away, that's, that's my line of business. I'm a microbiologist, although we have to use this trendy name, uh, microbiomics now, uh, and I work mainly for the deodorants category. So about Unilever, so we are, we are big, we are very big, uh, a global company. So uh, the 2015 turnover was about 53 billion euros. Uh, it's split pretty evenly across the sort of three main geographies. So the Americas, Europe, but the bit that's a little bit, la a little bit higher and, and, and has definitely got the, the highest underlying volume growth is the, it's what we call D&E markets, developing and emerging markets. So Asia, Africa, Central and Eastern Europe. And again, if I'd given this presentation 10 years ago, that, that number would be been a lot more, but that really is our, sort of, our growth area now. I mentioned that we're, we, we're very much a brand-led business, and uh, it's just a, a snapshot of our many. We've got, we've got several hundred brands. Uh, apparently it's too many, but anyway, we, that, that's what we have. And uh, these, so these are some of the biggest ones here, many of which you will recognize, some of which you might not, um, because they have a different name in the UK that they do in the rest of the world. So I mentioned I work for the deodorants business mainly. So Axe is, is one of our biggest deodorants brand, but does anyone know what that is in this country? Lynx, correct, yes. It's the, the, the Lynx effect is the Axe effect in the rest of the world. And Rexona is, is the single biggest deodorants brand in the world. And in the UK, it is called Sure. So what, you, what we know as Sure is Rexona in the rest of the world. And you'll see some of the other like the brands like Omo and Rama uh, are much more familiar outside the UK than in it. But we will have, we will have UK-centric equivalents. And uh, others you will definitely recognize, like, like Magnum, uh, for example, and Hellman's, and Walls, of course. This is our vision. It is to grow our business, actually, from this came out 2010, and the, and the objective was to double the size of the business by 2020, but at the same time, reducing our environmental footprint, and also, at the same time, increasing our positive social impact. So that is our current vision. It has been for several years. It's what we call now the USLP, Unilever Sustainable Living Plan. Uh, and apparently we are on target with all of these uh, metrics, uh, according to the chairman, and who am I to argue with him? So sustainable growth, sustainability, still requires innovation. Uh, and that brings us on to our mission. And, and starts leading us into the world of R&D and Unilever. So our mission is to building brands through benefit-led innovation unlocked by science and technology. So the, the, the key mantra is to use R&D, to use science, differentiating science and technology to develop better products than our competitors. So what about R&D at Unilever? Well, we do a lot of it. Um, 
we, we spend about a billion euros annually, and that, that, that is across the full spectrum of R&D, so that's not just what you would classically call research and what we now just call discover. We have this sort of 3D model now, which is discover, design, and deploy, and all of that is classed as, as R&D, but in, in total that, that equates to about a billion euros per annum, and about 6,000 people uh, in, uh, globally in the company working in, in, in R&D. There are six key sites, which I'll show in a moment, but in addition to that, there's about another 90 locations around the globe. For example, many of the factories have got development labs associated with them. And we have a portfolio uh, historically of around 20,000 patents, including applications, but, but mainly grants. And we, we file about 300 new patents per annum. And, and the last uh, figure that, that, that was available in 2015, we published uh, 240 peer-reviewed uh, publications. That's actually a really boring slide. I do apologise. This is this is our organ this is our organisationally how we're set up, and it's very much aligned to the business. So there are four key categories. Personal care, so that's cosmetics, etc. So that's, for example, where the deodorants business would fit in. Home care is, for example, uh, laundry and household cleaning. Uh, refreshment is tea and ice cream. And food is the remainder of the foods business, so spreads, etc., uh, mayonnaise, etc., etc. And underpinning, from a, from, a, from a scientific research perspective, we have got activities that span these three Ds that I mentioned, discover, design, and deploy, aligned to each of these categories. And we also have an underpinning strategic science group who do bioscience and physical science and feed into those four areas as well. And we've got various capabilities uh, which underpin all that, such as clinicals, digital R&D, packaging, and a big one, which is big where I work, I work in a laboratory called Colworth uh, Park. In, uh, near Bedfordshire, and that's also the global centre for our safety department, SEAC, uh, which, you, which you can see on the screen there as well as one of the, the capabilities. Those are the six R&D sites. So in the, in, in the US, there's a, a lab in Trumbull in Connecticut. It used to be in New York, but that was prime real estate, so that had to change. In the UK, we've kind of got where it all started, which is Port Sunlight. So Sunlight Soap was the sort of forefather of Unilever. It's its first branded product. And Unilever was, Lever Brothers was a, a soap manufacturer. And there was a, a Dutch company called Uni, which was a margarine manufacturer. Same raw materials, same stocks. So they, they actually formed uh, an alliance called, and became, you know, so Unilever to this day is an Anglo-Dutch company. And there's a lab in Holland, oh, not for much longer really, we've announced that we are closing this eventually, but the, the Vladigan Laboratory near Rotterdam. The other one in the UK that I mentioned, Colworth, uh, is actually a science park now with Unilever as the main, uh, as the main tenant, but it, it, it is still one of our main, our main laboratories. And the two uh, laboratories which have probably got most increasing investment because of the location and the importance of the the d and &E markets that I mentioned earlier are in uh, Bangalore in India and Shanghai in China. I've been to all of these labs apart from Shanghai. I've not been there. And we do a lot of uh, external collaboration, open innovation. Uh, we have 14 top universities, 18 global partners. These are our strategic partners. These are not all the companies, all the universities and all the companies that we work with. I mean, I'm, I mentioned uh, Oxford and, and York universities earlier, but we do have a strategic alliances with these academic and uh, industrial uh, partners. Uh, so, for example, University of Liverpool is one where there's a huge investment um, and it's very, very obviously geographically very close to Port Sunlight, just across the Mersey. And uh, so the, the latest manifestation of that is they've just opened a, a sort of a part Unilever, part university, part government funded uh, building called the MIF, the Materials Innovation Factory. And that's been a huge investment for Unilever as well as the, the university. And that's just opening now and uh, a whole variety of R&D positions are becoming, are becoming available online there within the next, the next few years. And that, that's it, really. These uh, websites have not come up very clearly at all, have they? Not, not particularly good uh, 
color uh, choices. However, they, they are pretty easy to find. So the, the Unilever, there is a Unilever Careers website, which is probably your first port of call, it's the best, and that, that covers everything that's available. Uh, so for example, a lot of the stuff around, the, I mean, you guys are probably a little bit too advanced for it now, but one of the biggest investments we made in the last few years is in apprenticeships, so for school leavers. So we, we have a big apprenticeship program in the UK, so that's covered there. But also you'll read about a, a scheme that sounds extremely similar to one that you heard from RB earlier, which is the Future Leaders, you know, UFLP, you know, the Future Leaders Program. So that is our graduate recruitment scheme, and, and that's where we, we, we recruit people on a, on a three-year course, and they spend six months chunks in different parts of the business, and then they state their preference and desires of where they want to work, and we try and, we try and find them a, a, a job at the end in that, in that particular area of the business. But we also have a whole load of strategic vacancies globally, including in the UK, and there, again, you, you can search them at that current vacancies uh, site there. So uh, I can point you to them earlier if you do later on a one-to-one. -one. We've got a stand through there, 10, and I'll be doing some one-to-one -one interviews later as well. But for now, I shall stop. Thank you very much.